so on. So well, for the most part, we're all Shaker residents. We all have historic homes. We've all been involved in point of sale um, inspections probably for the most part. Um, this is very much like a point of sale. Uh, so, so what we've done is we've walked each of the facilities and evaluated the existing conditions based on these 23 criteria. So the Ohio, um, state of Ohio has a school design manual, and probably a lot of you heard that in the first meeting or the last meeting that you attended, and that really sets the minimum. So Steve mentioned that there's a code required minimum, and that outlines everything from heating, your plumbing fixtures, your windows, everything on this list is outlined. And we go through and check and see what complies and what doesn't comply. Um, it's very essentially black and white. There's not a lot of mystery to it. You either have ADA compliance at all your entries or you don't have ADA compliance at all your entries. And then we plug in, if they're not ADA compliant, there's a formula that sort of gets populated that um, assigns a cost to that ADA compliance and it gets added up. So at the end of this, it gives us a tool to understand what it's gonna cost. And the number that Steve mentioned, the $170 million, is essentially the cost to upgrade all eight school buildings to the state standards. And we'll go through, and I'm just gonna highlight quickly some of the items, go to the next one. Um, so we're, we're dealing with historic buildings. The newest building that we have is the middle school, and that's about 59 years old. So we're dealing with some antiquated architecture, um, and a lot of cases deferred maintenance that has taken place. Um, so you'll, you'll see a lot of the common themes as we go through these slides. And trust me, I'm not going to read through all the text, but this was part of our presentation to the executive board where we went into a lot of detail. But some of the common themes are essentially all the schools need new roofs. Um, it, they're in different capacities, flat roofs, slate roofs, shingle roofs. Um, for the most part, they're all failing. They need to be replaced. So you can imagine that's a large cost. All schools don't have a proper heating and air conditioning system. We all know that they don't have air conditioning. So as part of this, the state uh, requirements, proper heating and air conditioning is required. So that is included in, in these numbers. Uh, if you go to the next one. These are just a few of the examples. Um, we just took a, a small snapshot. You can see uh, there's issues in the, in the lower left-hand side with some of the existing block. The masonry is, is uh, deteriorating. We have lighting issues in the, in the classrooms. You can see by the next image over. So there's really top to bottom, there's things that have to take place to bring the buildings up to code and up to standards. Uh, a few other uh, to touch on, uh, plumbing fixtures. Th things as simple as the, the restroom facilities aren't ADA compliant. Your entries into your buildings in a lot of cases aren't ADA compliant. So in some cases the back entry might be, but the front and some of the sides aren't, which dictate how people use the space. Uh, this is the example of the middle school. There's a lot of issues, even though the middle school is a newer building, there are a lot of exterior envelope issues. And in, the way we sort of look at things is, as a starting point, we want to make sure the buildings are warm, safe, and dry. That's something we sort of uh, preach a lot. We want to make sure that the, the roof isn't leaking, that there's proper ventilation, the windows work properly. These are just sort of the basic things that we would have in our own homes. We want to make sure that we have those for the school buildings. That's even before we get to the programming with, within, the, within the building itself. Is, and that's what we're going to talk about in a little more detail this evening. Uh, running through Woodbury, uh, just a couple examples. A lot of the schools have issues with uh, water infiltration along the foundations. If you go to the next image, or the next slide, you can see the lower left, that's uh, efflorescence. You, that's a, a result of water coming through your masonry walls, which means you don't have proper drainage, the, the roof, the downspout leaders aren't working properly. Um, you can see on the far right at the bottom, that's an example of one of the uh, pieces of equipment, part of the mechanical system of the building. You can see it's just very outdated. Uh, they've been doing what they can to keep it alive, but there's a lot of work that has to go into that. Plumbing, like I mentioned earlier, plumbing fixtures, bathrooms are all, for the most part, original. There have been some renovations in some of the schools, but you can see those are the original sinks, the, the uh, original urinals, um, and a lot of those aren't, aren't compliant. Uh, on a way, uh, just a couple uh, touching points here if you want to go to the next slide. You can see an example of the corridors, very poorly lit. Um, that's a sort of reoccurring theme, lighting. Uh, technology, a lot of the schools have been renovated with some new technology, but we heard sort of universally that it's oftentimes in poor locations. It wasn't sort of programmed correctly with the function of the room. Sometimes the light comes in, or the uh, natural daylight comes in and affects the technology. So while there is technology in some of the rooms, it's, it's really not functioning properly. We even heard in some of the schools they have one outlet per classroom. So you can imagine you have extension cords and power cables and everything else running throughout, and that's uh, 
that's not code compliant as you can imagine, not safe for our homes and not safe for our school buildings. Lomond, uh, if you wanna go to the next slide. Uh, so a lot of the, the same common themes. We have uh, roof issues, you can see at the bottom, accessibility, toilet facilities. Um, we also look at things such as the furnishings. And we all know that the furnishings, they're just not compliant. They're old desks, heavy. Um, the, the current standard is to use more smaller furniture that, are, that can be broken apart, that can be repurposed for a lot of different programs. Um, the OFCC uh, mandates that, or that's a requirement, so all the new furniture would be included uh, in, in, the, in the program. The other thing is, uh, gets down to the level of detail of storage in each classroom, the amount of whiteboard in each classroom. So all these things have been analyzed as we've gone through the facilities. But I, I think as we go through this and I sort of outline some of these big pictures, you get a, you get a feel for what we're, we're, the gravity of the situation. There's a lot that we have to um, sort of take on. Some schools are much better than others. Some are actually a little bit bigger than they should be based on the number of people in the school. I think a lot of you know the Fernway is sort of very small. Um, and then there's some other schools like Onaway and a few others that are actually a little bit larger than they need to be. Um, but we do have some schools, uh, Mercer's one of them, that actually has classrooms and other spaces in the basement. That is a no-no for the OFCC. You cannot have, every classroom has to have natural light, um, has to be fully accessible. So there are some big things, big hurdles that need to be overcome. Just a few examples here at Mercer where there's, you can see there's some cracks in the uh, bottom two images. In the middle, the masonry, the walls are cracking. There's a lot of uh, uh, maintenance that needs to be done. And then just the overall conditions of, of some of the facilities. They've done the best of what they can, but they're, they're definitely in need of, uh, of a major uh, tune-up. Uh, Fernway, if you want to go to the next one. Uh, some of these facilities we found, and uh, Fernway is one of them, there's an old coal room underneath the um, parking lot. So that's how antiquated some of these spaces are doesn't serve any purpose, should be removed. Um, but those are the types of things. You can see another example of the uh, mechanical equipment, the bottom right-hand corner. Just very outdated systems, everything needs to be updated. Uh, Boulevard, the middle image there, you can see that's uh, the gym floor, and that's uh, some water damage that's taken place. So at one point there was a leak, it's been repaired, but the floor is still damaged. And, and we see this throughout, there's a lot of um, ceiling tiles, Floor damage, there's been damage to the interior, as you can imagine. Next slide. And then a lot of reoccurring themes, like I mentioned. The, the roof needs a lot of work, uh, facilities, bathrooms. You can see there's a, a large pipe that's running on the outside of the building here. That's actually a downspout leader that they've tacked on the side of the building. So a lot of, a lot of band aids, essentially, in, in some of these situations. So the big question is, and this is what we want to share so you understand what it takes just to bring the buildings up to current code. So the number on in the middle, which is labeled as budget, that is the number that we're given. When we plug in all these aspects that don't meet the Ohio code, that's the number that's spit out. So for the high school building, for 9 through 12, to bring that up to current code without any reprogramming is over $50 million. And as you step through the middle school, of course, as you can imagine, the larger school, uh, the more cost associated with it. Uh, the middle school is uh, about a little over $31 million. Woodbury Elementary is a little over 28 million. Boulevard, uh, about 10 and a half. Fernway is uh, about 11 and a half. Lomond, 11.4. Uh, Mercer, 14 point, almost 14.4. And then Onaway is uh, about 12 and a half, a little bit more than that. So all told, that's $170 million. So I know there was a conversation or some questions about, you know, why are some of these things being considered with combining five, six, seven, eight? Some of it is, what is our strategy to solve the problem? If we have to spend $170 million to bring our, our buildings just up to code, is there an alternative? And that's what we wanted to discuss. Is there a combination which, which allows us for some efficiencies on what we're going to spend? Um, or do we want to keep 